motor and drive selection in an increasingly electronic era offers varied and distinct choices. This makes it crucial for users to understand and use the most appropriate drive and motor control technology. As a result, we surveyed Control Design's audience to get a snapshot of the types of drive technologies now being used on their machines, including servo drives, stepper motors, and supporting components and software. We've also asked Kevin Pauley, Control Systems Engineer at RapAid, to join us to analyze those answers from a machine builder perspective. RapAid builds vertical and horizontal form, fill, and seal packaging machines. So don't go away, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back with Kevin Pauley from RapAid, so let's dive right into the data. We first asked our audience, do you specify servo motors and drives? Close to 71% of the respondents said yes, and of those, 53% use both analog and digital servo drives. We also asked if they use stepper motors, and just over half responded that they do use steppers. So, Kevin... Given all this interest in servos, help us understand some of the reasons why machine builders might choose servos, and then what are the applications in which steppers make more sense? And are those reasons changing these days? Jim, with our machines, it's all servos. Uh, we're making pretty rapid, repetitive moves, reasonably high torque. Now, they're form fill and seal machines, like you said, so uh, if I were to have to control, say, an attached auger filler, I might consider a stepper in that case. But as a standard, it's just all servos. More than half the respondents report that they use all servos, steppers, and other motors. 40% use a combination of motors and line shafts, but only 5% use only line shaft and mechanical takeoffs. Kevin, this is likely application specific, but what are your strategies for deciding to use just electronics or needing a mechanical component as well? Oh, well, we definitely want to try and reduce the amount of mechanical components on the machines. Well, I do anyway. I guess that would be my natural inclination as a control guy. The goal is to get to a Generation 3 machine, and we've still got a few things to work out regarding the replacement of some mechanical components that have been working acceptably on our machines for a long time. So we're going to have to take a thoughtful approach to this, but we are moving in that direction. In addition, we find that 58% now buy integrated motor and drive assemblies, and 55% say they specify premium efficiency motors for their machines. However, 25% say they only do it when customers request it. Kevin, we know that integrated drives and motors provide easier configuration and can be space savers, and that premium motors can reduce operating costs. In your experience, is this a growing choice? Nearly half of the respondents don't seem to be buying this premise yet. Well, regarding the premium efficiency motors, I'm starting to see mention of it including in some customer specs. But when we mention that, we use standard efficiency motors. No one's taken exception to it. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're not talking about 200-horse motors here either. I mean, these machines that we make will have four or five fractional horse motors. And it can be difficult internally from an engineering standpoint to present a change that drives up your initial costs. And now you have to sell your salespeople on the idea of selling the customer on the concept of saving money two or three years down the road. I mean, OEM engineers may embrace the idea, but until more customers insist on it, there'll be no urgency here to make the change. Though many factors go into decisions to specify and buy motors, most machine builders don't seem to be overly devoted to particular brands. We asked, are motor choices influenced by the brand of controller or drive or PLC you use? Only 28% say motor choice in is influenced by the industrial drive or controller brand, and 21% say motor choice is influenced by the brand of PLC or controller platform they have. We wouldn't have been surprised to see a bigger influence here, Kevin. Have open architectures made motor selection choice that much more independent of controller and platform? Aren't specifiers still concerned about having more than one supplier to yell at if things go wrong? Well, personally, I like to get the drive to supplier to at least endorse the motor I'm using. In the event there's issues with the drive or a system, I don't want the drive supplier to be able to say, well, you shouldn't be using that motor with our drive. The first thing you have to do is change all the motors and see if that resolves a problem. Now, this this way, uh, you don't really get to the yelling stage. And besides, these controls are supposed to be fun. You shouldn't be yelling at people. 
Good points all, Kevin. Thanks for your help in explaining some of the decisions that go into the selection of drives and motors. I think you helped flesh out some of the survey's results. We really appreciate your sharing your thoughts with our Controls Engineer audience. I'm Jim Montague. Join us again soon for another Control Design Market Intelligence Report.